Okay, we're we are going to start to go through a lab procedure, and the lab that we uh, want to end up with is to determine the percent of copper in a U.S. penny. And so to do that, we're going to use the spectral photometers. And what we're going to have to do first is to create a Beer's Law plot. And to create a, a Beer's Law plot to find the percent of copper, we have to start off with a standard copper solution. And so I'm going to show you first how that's prepared. So to do that, we're going to put a piece of pure copper into a beaker, and I believe there's about 10 grams of copper here. And then we're going to add to that some nitric acid. And what will happen is the copper will react with the nitric acid and the copper will be dissolved. As you can see, it makes a toxic brown gas, and so we're going to want to turn on the fume hood for that. Okay, next week you will be doing the same kind of chemical reaction. Instead of putting pure copper in with the nitric acid, you will be putting a real penny in with the nitric acid. And the nitric acid will react with the penny and the zinc and dissolve it all and make a solution. Okay, the goal for today is to make a Beer's Law plot for a standard solution uh, that contains copper. And so, as you saw before, we took some copper, we dissolved it in nitric acid, and then we added some water to it. And so the standard solution looks like this right here. It's this blue stuff. And so what we want to do is to make a Beer's Law plot. And so remember, Beer's Law says that the absorbance of a solution is directly proportional to the concentration. So what we're going to do is we're going to use known amounts of a solution, or a solution of known concentration to measure, and we're going to use the spectral photometer to measure the absorbance. And so by using known concentrations, the machine will measure the absorbance, we will get a Beer's Law plot. And the knowns for today, we want 20 milligrams of copper per 100 milliliters of solution. Okay, so what we want to do to make our known solutions, we want to add two milliliters of the stock solution, which is this blue stuff right here. We want to put it into a 100 milliliter volumetric flask and dilute to, 100 mil, to the 100 milliliter mark. And if we do that with the two, then the next bottle will do a four milliliters to 100 milliliters. In the, in the third bottle, we'll do six milliliters of the stock solution to 100 milliliters. And in the fourth uh, flask, we'll do eight milliliters and we'll dilute to 100 milliliters. And if we do that, we will end up getting our known solutions where we would have 20 milligrams of copper per 100 milliliters of solution, 40 milligrams of copper per 100 milliliters, 60 milligrams of copper per 100, and 80 milligrams per 100. And then, in the following week, we will be able to use this Beer's Law plot to analyze how much copper is in a U.S. penny. Okay, what your group needs to do is to get four volumetric flasks, 100, 100 milliliter volumetric flasks, and they need to be labeled 2, 4, 6, 8, or, or 20, 40, 60, 80. It doesn't matter, just so you can keep track of what's in what. Okay, the one that's labeled 2, you're going to want to put 2 milliliters of the standard solution. And it's important to measure very carefully here because a Beer's Law plot is only as good as the measuring that gets done to make it. So if you measure wrong, your Beer's Law plot will be way off. So I'll put in exactly two. Okay, pour that into the bottle label two. It would probably be best at this time to rinse with distilled water because you're going to have to dilute the flask anyway so you might want to rinse out the graduate cylinder to get out any excess solution so and rinse that into the flask okay and the one labeled four you would want to put four milliliters of the standard solution 
So once again, measure very carefully. Okay, there's four. And then rinse again to our uh, known solutions. And as you can see, they're pretty light blue. And what the ammonium hydroxide does is it makes it darker blue so the spec 20s can pick them up. And so anyway, we need to add this. It's very strong stuff. It's around 15 molar. So you don't want to touch it. You don't want to get it on your hands and you don't want to breathe it because it smells really bad. It's a very strong ammonia smell. So this has to be done in the fume hood and you have to be very careful. Make sure you wear your safety goggles at all times when you're around this stuff. And so the procedure goes, you're going to add drops of the ammonium hydroxide and as you add the drops you need to swirl until it turns dark blue. There you can see it turn dark blue. And then you're going to add five more milliliters. So add five more milliliters. You need to do that for each of your unknowns. So once again, you Add drops until it turns dark blue, swirling as you add. And then add five more milliliters. You can see how that turns a nice dark blue, and the spectral photometer will be able to pick that up. Okay, now what we're going to be doing in this step is diluting our solutions to 100 milliliters. Now, these volumetric floss are kind of useful because you can't really screw these up uh, as far as measuring to the wrong line because they only have one line on them. And if you dilute or fill this flask up to the line, guess what? You have 100 milliliters. So what you're going to do is using a bottle of distilled water, you're going to add water until you've diluted your sample to the 100 milliliter mark. And so the only thing you got to be careful of here is don't go over the mark because if you go over the mark you have to start all over again. So be very careful when you get close to the mark. So you just add water until you get to the 100 milliliter mark. And sometimes these bottles squirt out kind of slow so if you're careful you could pour but once you get close to the mark you have to go extra slow. So once it gets into the neck of the bottle, it will go pretty fast. So I'd recommend using the squirt top when you get into the neck of the bottle. So remember to use distilled water. Okay, so dilute to the mark, do not go over. Remember to measure from the bottom of the meniscus. I was going to say 20. Okay, so after you get them diluted, you need to make sure your solutions are mixed thoroughly. So what you're going to do is stopper them with the appropriate size stopper, and then you're going to invert and do the mix them like this. Uh, invert at least 20 times. good idea to hold your finger over the top of the stopper. Okay, when you get done mixing, you should be able to line your bottles up. And just like last week, if you put them two, four, six, eight in a row, they should go from darker to, or lighter to darker. 